Hello and welcome back. Let's try to create a database and we also try to grant the permissions from our on-premises users uh, by integrating Azure AD users and then we also have a look on our database auditing and other important monitoring aspects uh, from the security point of view. So let's try to create a database here. So I would be quickly going through it like I can give here as a resource group name as a skill demo and database name some name which should be easy to identify like my web app sql app and then this is my server which i have to create as uh, first time because that's where the sql databases will be hosted so i've created the server and i'm fine with the uh, pool so let me create a elastic pool here so that's where uh, you can have or you can add multiple databases and utilize your proper resources according to our demand of the SQL databases. And if you see here, there are a lot of other options like business critical or premium or standard basic. So I'll just go with the basic standard because this is a pay as you go model for me. I'm fine with the 50 DTUs and it's going to charge me uh, some dollars here and uh, that would be very less in fact. So I'll just go to the uh, networking. I'm not going to attach anything here as uh, these are very pretty straightforward things. In fact, we have discussed all these in the previous lecture. I'll just create here a database. So database has been created. Let's go to the SQL databases and look at the, this is the overview, for example, that's a, a SQL resource group, uh, which way which we are placed all these SQL related. And if you see in this resource group, you have the Elastic Pool and SQL Server Database and Storage Account. So these are the things has been already there. So let's actually create the, attach the SQL Server. So that takes to the SQL Server. And I would be going back to uh, Active Directory domain admin uh, this is where you can integrate uh, your required uh, so you can just point to the resource group sql server active directory admin and search admin so uh, earlier when we try to create we created as a uh, different user account that's a sql authentication user now we are actually calling a user uh, from source as the active directory that's a ea admin which is a user account from my on-premises that means i do have a sync of ad connect from my on-premises so i'll just save that so ea admin at uh, lan in my lab.com so the user is saved i need to refresh it looks like the page was not updated here so let me refresh by hitting a f5 button yeah it just loads the same page but this time it will have the AI admin. So now what it means is I should be able to take the server name as Active Directory Admin. Now if you see and the server name is that. So this is where I need to create a policy. So the policy should be allowing my local IP. So if you see here, I can he here add my IP address where I can connect to this SQL server from my on-premises so I need to whitelist here so that it can connect in fact I have already created but you know uh, just for your information like I can give here one more time as office SQL subnet and save it and make sure that uh, if you're trying to use any other Azure services take uh, here as the services also checkbox so that this checkbox will also makes easy to connect other Azure resources and uh, let's jump into overview and try to copy the SQL server name and also you can check the event logs uh, for the activity that we have just changed uh, all that information also you can find out from the activity log who has done uh, what kind of changes they have done all that information you can get it in detailed for example I can drill down further level to see here uh, what's happening so Let's refresh to see if anything is created, nothing. So I'll just open up my SQL Studio Management and also I'll just take this server name. Uh, if you see here, that's an Active Directory admin who's going to connect and that's my SQL resource group. So I'll just go back there and show you here there are three different things. 
uh, one is the elastic pool and sql server database so i'll just connect to the sql server because that's where the server we need to connect so within this you have the server name so just copy that server name and open up your sql which is from my on premises network you have here five different authentication options where you can choose either windows authentication the first one is the windows authentication where if the device is joined to the windows uh, active directory it can simply connect without entering the user account because the account details already used to log in and also the sql server authentication that's the normal authentication method where uh, while we are creating the user account we gave as the account details like party and other user account that's a sql server specific authentication you can use that um, account details to log in and other one is this is the demo which is covered under azure active directory with mfa is already enabled for this user account which is again sync from your on premises because we do have the hybrid active directory so that's the account which is coming from our on premises but it is uh, even part of azure active directory because that specific account is enterprise admin and he also have the user account enabled with the mfa so that's gonna we're gonna perform that other one would be the azure active directory password so here this is where you need to give the user id uh, of your uh, on premises with a domain name let's say if your domain name is a root root backslash and the user account and other one is a integrated um, if the machine is already logged in with azure aid uh, with the azure active directory and joined to that and you can use the azure active directory integrated option so these are the possible options you have so let's jump with the azure active directory with universal mfa so these are the options you have and you can test it all these when you enabled i can choose here uh, the account um, if you see here i have chosen here as the azure active directory with mfa um, that means my account also has the mfa enabled so it should be able to connect by using uh, azure active directory with mfa enabled that means uh, if a user has a mfa multi-factor authentication enabled that also will be prompted and later point only he will be connected uh, or he or she will be connected to the sql server that means we're actually securing uh, directly from the azure active directory so the database is fully secured with the integration of azure active directory and with your on-premises user accounts also so let's uh, once i enter and click and connect it actually prompts me uh, for the user id and password to be revalidated with the mfa so i just enter my details and i just skip the mfa specific did not show you but in general uh, it will actually ask my phone uh, phone number specific code to be entered so i entered that and if you see here if i drill down databases I can actually see my database and if I try to reconnect to the same database it doesn't ask any password also this time because it has already uh, and a token already exists within this machine let's try to create a user account and then we also alter that user account to get as the DB owner permission so that the user can do all his work so to do that i just have to go to the security and users so let me go back there within the portal let's go to security users and uh, here i can right click and if you see here the default user accounts and right click a new user this time it will actually pre-populated with a complete query that can use as a template to create any user account so i'll just uh, instead of filling there i'll just you know take it out all these information and i'll enter here create user that's a spell mistake here and the user from external username is patty at Learn in my laptop.com from external provider. So there will be a user account created if I execute that command uh, within this database, my web SQL app 01. Now I have a user account. So to do that, uh, to just to visualize, I can simply refresh here so that I should be able to get it. And it's taking some time. 
I'm able to see here a user account now which we just created and if I want I can delete all that rename all that can be done from a GUI but I definitely I don't want to do it but instead I want to uh, grant some more permissions um, for the user account and later point um, he, I'm gonna actually grant him as a permission to alter any user account so he's gonna become as the more administrative role so that instead of we every time create he can create other user accounts um, by granting alter any user and then also I wanted to grant him as the SQL database admin that's a DB owner uh, for example I'll simply alter DB owner as the add member as the second so what we have done so far is we actually taken a user account which is from an external provider and we altered to granted him as the user administrator so that means he can create new user accounts later point he can also uh, we added him as a data owner that's a database owner so he has a full control now that means if we try to connect with that user account he should be able to uh, do all the required action so I'll just you know uh, connect to the same server paddy it let in my lab but I just have to give here my database name the reason being the reason being here we are trying to log in but this is a this is called contained user so I need to give the exact database uh, permission because we have not granted full permission on the server instead the database so he'll able to connect so now whatever the user icon we have given like paddy at uh, learninmylab.com user is able to connect it so that's how it's going to work so you can use here the windows ad account and as well as the azure ad where you can utilize the hybrid azure ad uh, benefits also and you can securely connect to the databases you can check out your databases tables whatever we have earlier all that information can be viewed so let's jump into other topic here within this lecture uh, for auditing so we have learned uh, in the previous lectures for the monitoring uh, where we used to collect for the debugging all other activity logs so here also you can actually collect the logs specific to the audit log so that all the information can be stored in a storage account so just click on a storage account that is uh, you have already a storage account so that's where it's going to save complete uh, logs and you can also use a retention time and number of days or primary or store or primary key or secondary key you can utilize it so that's about the auditing side for the seek uh, storage account and also we learned in the previous lectures about the log analytics and event tab so that also here you can integrate so that you will be getting the benefits of complete debugging uh, specific logs or audit logs will be saved so that concludes this lecture and uh, I hope this is useful for you thank you for watching this